you might be asking yourself, how did I get here? I'm not being philosophical. This time on PLT Canada's Green Jobs, we're talking about forestry roads. PLT Canada's Green Jobs is taking you all over Canada to explore jobs that are unique, fun, and most importantly, make a difference for our environment and in our communities. Well, I've been working in the forest and conservation sector since 1980. So I'd say I got a few years under my belt. Back then, you didn't necessarily have to go to college. After high school, I went straight to work at a plywood mill. I don't like working indoors, so that's when I moved to working in the bush, because in the bush, every day is different. It doesn't matter what you do, it's never the same. My name is Michel Pronovo. I'm a supervisor for Shane Brothers. I take care of the logging aspect, trucking and so on, and the cutting. We're here at Genier Brothers in Cochrane, Ontario. It is a sunny but very cold day here and we're just getting a tour around of the shop. There's some trucks being fixed and worked on. Everything else seems to be running pretty smoothly here. There's not a lot of equipment in the yard, so that means that things are going well. When we're planning the roads, we get our blocks from Abitibi River Forest. So then we look at our maps and the aerial photos and this is when we propose our roads and then we come out in the field to do our first check. A lot of times there's no access whatsoever, so we look at Google and we find trails and we take the snow machine and the snowshoes in the back and you go as far as you can and then you walk to the block to look at it and figure out access. One of the benefits of living in a place like Cochrane and Timmins is that there's so many amazing snowmobile trails around. That's one of the preferred pastimes up here and you really, you need to embrace winter to fully experience life in the north. I love working in the forest and conservation sector. The fact that I get to work outside makes me feel grateful <laughs> for the work that I do. I mean, some people pay to be outside when I'm getting paid to be outside. <laughs> All right, let's put our snowshoes on and you can show me how it's done. Perfect. I think that snowshoeing is an acquired skill. The more time you spend on the snowshoes, the easier it is to get around. And honestly, it makes your life a lot easier in the winter if you just strap them on and get used to using them because you can really get from A to B so much faster than if you were not wearing snowshoes. So is this the road right now or we're heading to where it's gonna start? You want me to flag now? Yeah, you can. The other day I came across a cow and a calf. They were about 100 feet from me. That's what I love about my job. You'll come across a family of partridge and they're scaring the crap out of you because they just pop out of nowhere. Yeah, I've also had many the minor heart attack from partridge scaring me in the woods. When you least expect it, everything is so quiet and still, and then there's the drumming of the wings, and I jump a mile up into the air. They dig their holes in the snow for the heat, and they come out, and when they come out, it's a scare, well, not scary, but it's, it makes you jump. Those are the best days when you have those wildlife encounters. We have to protect special habitat areas. So if we find a nest or a den, we give it a reserve. A lot of time in the bush, you will get creeks that don't even exist on the maps, but you'll find them in the forest. So now we know there's a creek here. So this will have to be a 30 meter reserve for okay. sure. So we did it. it wasn't mapped before, but now it's a feature we're seeing with our own eyes. We're gonna apply the appropriate protection and maybe have to change the plan a little bit. We'll make sure we put it on the map before we issue the maps to the line runner so we can put our boundaries. A line runner's job is he goes in the field after we issue the block. They do the boundaries and also they protect new values that they find as they go. By putting the ribbons closer, we make sure that the machine stays within the line and sees them clearly. My way of thinking is when you look back, over your shoulder, 
you should see three ribbons. If you see three ribbons, the operator will see them. It was neat to be out with Michelle when he was running the road lines. That's something that I do in my own job too. And you know, I noticed that he had a bit of a different ribbon tying strategy than I do. So I thought maybe this was the right time to have a bit of a challenge. I got to shoot a challenge and at first I was backing up because like, you know, I was a little leery. So I noticed that we have different ribbon tying techniques. Yes. I yeah. bet you mine's faster. Maybe. You want to have a competition? Sure. On your mark, get set, go. So close. <laughs> so the challenge didn't turn out exactly as I was hoping because Michelle's method was a bit quicker than mine, but maybe that's just because of his couple years of extra experience he has on me. I should have wagered money in it. If we would have had to run three kilometers a line, she would have been at kilometer two while I was at three. So she wouldn't have kept up. <laughs> to me, line running is very important. Yeah, it'd be a dirty job, but you see lots of cool stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. I think that it's really cool to hear Michelle talk about how much he values the protection that's happening out here in the forest. You know, his job is to get wood to the mill, but to hear him say that he prefers when there is someone called a line runner that comes out ahead of time and looks for those extra values to make sure that they're protected, that's pretty special. That really shows the concern that people have for the forest who work in the forest. It's just too bad right now because it's only minus five. It's a bit too warm. So I know what you're thinking. Did I just hear that correctly? Michelle wants it to be even colder than it is right now. Is he like part polar bear or something? Although this did start to make more sense to me when we went to the next location when they were doing some road construction. Winter time is the best because you can build roads very quick. You take a road like we're standing on right now, you take your tractor, you shave the stumps, and your frost goes in and you have your road made. At minus 20, it's the best temperature because your ground freezes. We mix the snow into the black box, so it draws the water and it cools off the ground faster. We're uh, reopening the road there for uh, getting access to go cut the block. Uh, it's a previous block from four years ago. So we're trying to get access to it to the back end. to go get the poplar that's left in the back. While watching Michelle's crew build the road, it started to make a lot more sense to me why he wants it to be even colder than it is right now. For example, if I was standing where I am right now in the summertime, I'd be sunk up to my knees in a muddy swamp. We need to make sure these soils are protected by only accessing this area in the winter. These roads here, as we see like on the side here, the moss, so this is a black spruce swamp. So all they are is ice roads, really. Like the minute the snow melts, and everything comes right back to normal. The roads that they're building are temporary. They're not ones that you would drive on in the summertime, and they're not built to last. So once the harvest here is complete, the intention is that those roads will grow in quickly so that they are back to being forest area, making as small of a footprint as possible when they're out here doing the work. One of the most remarkable things about the forest and conservation sector is how environmental values have really come to the forefront. It's really at the basis of everything we do in the forest is making sure that those values are protected. So we've been talking a lot about bird nests and we just happen to be driving down this road and see this uncut patch of trees in a harvest area, look up and behold, we have two stick nests. So Michelle <laughs> happens to have this handy dandy nest key with him. So we're just trying to uh, key out what kind of nests they are. So what do you think? If we look at the, the, the shape here and the way the sticks are, it, it would look like a raven or a crow, I would think. Cool, so. well, I would concur with that evaluation. It's pretty neat that you have this with you all the time though. You have to, like, uh, you can't remember all the information, so yeah, exactly. every once in a while you need your cheater card. 
Here's a real tool. It's like a mechanics toolbox. It's the SFI booklet. All the machines, they have the booklets. They don't have to know all the rules by heart. Those booklets are there as a tool. It's a very good guide on pre-harvest planning, aggregates and roads, wasteful practices, harvest operations, stream crossing. As part of the job, we sometimes install portable bridges to get across creeks. The bridges are basically beams with decks on top. The bridges sit on sills to make sure that we don't damage the soil. We need to protect the fish habitat from siltation, so there are many precautions taken to make sure that doesn't happen. All water leads somewhere. We want to make sure that water is protected. This is the map from the line runner, and the gully here in the back we protected because everything is slope dependent because of the river that's behind us, the Abitibi River. So uh, it's 30, 50, 70, or 90 meters, depending on the slope. So higher slope means more protection so that it's no risk of any runoff. So that's part of the balancing act, right? So we're here to harvest wood, but these values need protecting. So that area is just gonna be, stay out of there. Nothing's gonna be cut, right? That's right. So Michelle was telling me about all the protection measures that they put in place uh, for the Abitibi River and he described it. It sounds really beautiful. So I'm just snowshoeing to go and have a look for myself. So I'm still in the cut area right now, but I'm approaching the boundary that was laid out to protect the river. So let's go have a look. So I'm in the uncut area now, adjacent to the river. <laughs> and it feels like I've been walking for a while. Um, so there's definitely a pretty big reserve put on this. And the snow's a little deep, so I'll get there eventually. I made it! It's so beautiful. There's some wildlife tracks along the edge of the river here. It's definitely a popular spot. So, you know, seeing this in person really emphasizes the importance of protecting features like this in the forest. What a beautiful river. I can imagine canoeing down here in the summertime. I wouldn't really like to be in it right now though, so I'm gonna stay on shore. Communication is very important. Being bilingual is an asset because we have a lot of French Canadians from Quebec and they come here to work and a lot of them can't speak the language. So it makes it an asset to communicate in French and English. Oui. It helps out. Non, ça ici là. C'est là que ça il va avoir de la misère avec. C'est là qu'il y a pas que ça ça tombe en morceaux. On this job we have 16 trucks hauling. So that's a lot of traffic coming out of these roads. The logs are placed at about 20 feet away from the road just to give enough room for the log loader to go by to be able to grab the wood and place it on the trailer. They're giving me a chance to learn how to drive the logging truck. This should be fun. Breaker, breaker, kilometer 14, going out. This is really cool. I can see really well from up in this big truck. So I'm hauling 40 tons of poplar logs to the veneer mill in Cochrane right now. That's a lot of wood. And also, full disclosure, that mill is the site of my first forestry job in Ontario. So I am anxious to see what's changed since I've been there. Driving the logging truck was a little scary, but it was really comfortable in there. And I can imagine driving down the logging roads, listening to my music and podcasts every day. It seems like a pretty neat work environment. Trucking is one of the few industries that shares its workplace with the general public, so its operations must continually work to improve safety standards. Recently, SFI partnered with Workplace Safety North to develop a trucking safety program. The program reviews the hazards of driving on logging roads and covers the unique physical nature of these roads, how to travel safely on them, and how to prepare a vehicle and driver for traveling on them. I was glad that Lacey went in the truck and did drive it. It's big truck, like uh, with the trailer and the truck, you're looking at 72, 71 feet long. So it's a long thing to handle and uh, that shows anybody that wants to come into the field, there's always opportunity to try it. <laughs> I never thought this is something I would be doing. 
in Cochrane. It's pretty cool to see from stump to destination here. We've seen the poplar being harvested, processed, sorted at the landing. We hauled it here and now we're at the mill and these logs behind me are waiting to go in. And over here, we see some that are actually going in to the ponds. And that is the smell that I definitely remember. You know, cedar and some species of trees have really nice smelling wood. Poplar is a little pungent. <laughs> so the reason that you can smell the poplar ponds is because it's literally just water that they put the poplar logs in to soak so that they soften up a little bit and become saturated and peel easier when they go through the peeler. The peeled sheets is what gets made into veneer. Everything is changing. Like in 1980, the rules were very minimal comparing to what we're going into. And I'm proud to see that there is changes and we're respecting the environment. Protecting values is very important. At the end of the day, when you're going home and you say, well, we saved that bird's nest, or we saved this creek, this new value that we found, that makes you feel really good. Even though my tires rattle down roads like this every day for work, I never really put much thought into all the effort that goes into building them, and also all of the considerations about sustainability that have to go into road building. It's important to note that not all roads are built to last. Some, like these winter roads, are meant to grow in quickly so that they reduce the impact on the landscape. Thanks for joining me and Michelle Pronovo, Operations and Road Supervisor for Genier Brothers Trucking. Make sure to check out our other episodes of PLT Canada's Green Jobs and learn more about where you might find yourself in Canada's forest and conservation sector. If you would like a work experience in the forest and conservation sector, or would like to learn about our mentorship program and career resources, visit pltcanada.org. This episode was filmed on Treaty 9 territory, home to the Anishinaabe, Meshkegawak, and Algonquin peoples, as well as the historic Abitibi inland Métis community. 